with the recordings. Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, we will. Uh, I will start. Yeah, you will start recording. Right? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Suresh Kankanwadi. Uh, Welcome to uh, everyone on this particular uh, power mill uh, micros workshops. Uh, basically, uh, <clears throat> this will cover on to the micros, the what we are having uh, in the power mill and what is the applications and where you can use this particular micros. Uh, it is all about the detail on the micro. And uh, just you see on the push, uh, like presentations uh, on that, uh, you can see the objective of this uh, particular workshop sections for the, especially for the partner, uh, like how to simplify the workflow uh, as you are using these uh, options and as well as to the eliminate the manual error uh, when you are doing the day-to-day -day, uh, programming or something, you want to uh, eliminate the manual error, then the override the CAD process, as well as the simplify the simulation process and the poster verification. This all uh, coming under the simplification of the, the tool path or maybe the simulation that all the process can the poster verification and as well as the poster tool path creations and, uh, <clears throat> uh, and also you can uh, like uh, better tool path editing options and the optimize the tool path with the rename options and the machine tool simulations as well as the customize of the uh, some of the setup sheets and the previews. These are all going to cover on this particular uh, workshops on that. Uh, then we have simplified the micros with the uh, two category. One is the API and another one is the macros. And the micros under folder, uh, we are uh, categorized uh, different uh, options like when uh, we are optimizing for the folder creations for all the folder creations i am going to detail on how you can use for the folder creations and we are categorized the particular micros then uh, the each options they having more than four to five micros and you can use for that particular applications like when i will go to the curve and the pattern uh, uh, for the micros so whenever you are creating any curves or the pattern the how the simplifying or how the micros can use for this particular options and also the documentation micros the when uh, we are uh, the some of the people are looking for only the documentation purpose they can use this particular micros for to the do documentation then the tool path editing and optimization then the simulation and verification uh, after that, uh, Rajesh will take care uh, for the, after that, the API and the mold base and the general application mic. This will, uh, Rajesh will continue after my presentation. Okay, uh, first one, will, uh, I will take into the uh, macros for to the folder optimization. These are all the uh, set up the macros are available for the folder optimizations like a uh, work plane folder, tool path folder, boundary, and the tool folder pattern, as well as the NC program and tool path uh, rename, tool uh, rename. This I will explain you more how we can utilize in the inside power mill instead of only showing on the PPT. I will just explain, I will go through the each and every one uh, the macros and going to uh, show you the how you can use it and also you can need to this all the macros is need to go to implement on your customer side because of it is it is more useful compared to us the customer is going to uh, doing the day to day programming they need to simplify their work process uh, for to the faster programming creations and as well as to uh, save their programming time this uh, we need to implement uh, with the customer side then only this is the helpful for the customer just i will go to show you how we can the uh, inside power mill can you implement this one Okay, first one is uh, like what I shown for to the folder uh, optimization. In the folder optimization, just I will uh, show you how you can uh, create this shortcut uh, button. Just you right click on to the customize button. Just you click on to the customize uh, ribbon options. Once you click, uh, can you, anyone confirm, can you able to see my power mill screen? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, just you can go to the customize button. 
once you click on the customize buttons you can see uh, it will get many options one is the custom ribbon and the quick access quick access is going to show you on the top of this uh, options and when you go to the customize in the customize also uh, we have options called as the uh, four options like the combined menu as well as the micro once you select this macros and it is asking the what is the micros name though before i am going i'll just see here having a path just you click on to the open path in the open path we are uh, giving the setup the micros for this the folder creations inside the folder creations uh, the category is available like first one is the ng program just you select or maybe just copy this uh, name nc folder creations just you select this micros and now the path was selected uh, as per the micros and you can just give the name or maybe the copy and paste onto the uh, name of the micros once you select this then you can able to go ahead here to selecting the icons the which icon you are the comfortable to uh, seeing that particular options just you select that suppose i'm going to use this option for any kind of the folder creations i will use this the folder uh, icon just to select this uh, folder icon then you can go here options called as add suppose you are going to click on to the add and it will create the new tab you can see the new tab was created once it is the new tab was created you can able to access this new tab uh, onto the top of here you can see once i'll click ok and and it will add the new tab and also in the new tab you can able to edit it suppose you want to edit the name for the new tab just you can go and you can edit you can simplify this one suppose you are for the folder creations okay just you'll uh, mention the name just uh, i'm mentioning the name for the folder just you uh, enter the name here the uh, folder just uh, done okay now we can see uh, it is mentioning the new tab the inside the new tab this option will come now once i click okay and you can see it is added the new tab here once you click onto the new tab under this the option was added but still you want to modify this name you can go here and you can edit and add the name of this one it is added the new tab here just you want to change this one go to edit and you micros one or something you can give the name once i will click ok and it is possible to add it on the shortcut like a micros one you can see on this under a uh, shortcut menu once it is in a uh, shortcut menu was created and just you simply click this option and it will ask what is the name you want to use i want to create the nc folder name but i will use here the name for called as all nc or something okay once i click on the all nc it is possible to see under the folder category on the all nc folder this is the pre uh, regular method is creating the nc or the folders you can go to the folder create a folder then you uh, right click or maybe the double click then only you can change the name to avoid this all the clicking button then you can use this option for the folder creation the this will save the programmer time because of they can only single click and they can give the name instead of going to create then you can go to the options search the options this will take little bit time to uh, checking uh, all the time and then again you want to add the name just you click it then again renaming this this will take the time instead of that one uh, we have created the macros and as well as the shortcut menu for that particular options okay just you click i have uh, segregated the options on this maybe i will show you one more time uh, to how to create the shortcut buttons again i will go to the right click create the ribbon buttons and then you click on the options here called as micro buttons then you uh, use the name as well as you can add the name suppose i will use here the name uh, maybe i'll go to the options i'll use for to the uh, tool folder select the tool folder micros enter the name tool folder tool folder and just i'll mention here that tool okay just uh, 
select the options and then I need to add this particular inside this particular micro shortcut buttons. Click it and go to add it. Once you add it and now this will come under on this options. Now you can see just you click it now, then you can add the name for the used tools. Now this folder was created inside the tools. You can see now you move this all the tool folder uh, tools into the inside tool folder. What yeah. is the use of creating the tool folder and uh, uh, the your, what are the lengthier bar can able to minimize instead of moving all the time up and down you can move and you can uh, keep the your tools inside the folder like that the folder optimization again uh, the NC program you understood now I'll go for to the tool path folder now you can see I having a many tool paths I cannot kept all the tool path as the outside bar I need to kept in the inside folder just to click this option and and just to mention here like a rough this is the roughing tool path I want to keep inside this folder then you select and you move this tool path into roughing folder okay the uh, folder was created on there then the tool folder the what I uh, shown the before that you can use for the tool folder you can use for only the finish tools finish tools like you can give the name and now it is added into the inside finish tool now uh, the same uh, uh, another option for to the boundary folder just you click on to the uh, options uh, for this shortcut menu just enter the name like you want to use for this is for the 10 mm tool folder boundary only just select it now you can see the folder was created inside for the boundary you can see 10 mm this this boundary can move into inside the 10 mm tool folder okay also the work plane folder then uh, it is in a work plane uh, this you can see the work plane folders the number of work planes is more you cannot kept outside uh, on the um, tool path you want to uh, move that one like a uh, work plane options now the folder was created for to the work plane and as well as the rename tools now you can see the next macros option is for the rename tools rename tools is basically it will uh, take for your tool diameter as well as length now you can see there is a number it is in a two three four or some numbers was there you want to uh, standardize or maybe uh, suppose you are going here and you are typing uh, suppose it is in a 10 uh, mm ball or something you are typing the name it will take uh, time for typing instead of that one uh, suppose you have a hundred tools uh, it will take more time when you are uh, the typing for the manually suppose I will e use this option uh, to rename my tools in the single click my all the tools are going to rename as per the diameter and the length you can see drill diameter 2 and length is 10 mm like the ball nose the 6 mm uh, and it it will take only fraction of seconds and it will add on that name and as well as the length instead of you are adding the manually suppose i will make a uh, one month uh, like i'll just see the some of the name uh randomly i will change it suppose like this you are all the uh, name now i will just click the tool rename it will take the diameter first then it will take the length this micro says assigned that particularly and it is going to change now the suppose you have 100 tools in the one click you can able to change the name to save your programming time okay then the tool path rename now we can see here they having a uh, number of tool paths suppose i have activated this tool path then i will go to the tool path rename and it will ask the entry of the tool path type suppose i will enter some number 100 then entry of the uh, now it is taken into the one underscore hundred then the diameter and the radius it will automatically rename instead of your manually renaming you can use sometime o in the starting o 2000 then we'll take your tool path uh, two underscore o 2000 then you will take the diameter of the tool this will uh, take in the step by step and it will add the name instead of only uh, adding for all the manually this is also save your lot of time when you are doing the tool path arrangement or maybe the tool path rename 
okay uh, and and moving into the work plane uh, rename now we can see they having a different names in the work planes just you click it and it will activate one by one and what are the tool uh, work plane is activated i need to use for this is some of the number or the name suppose i will use for to the uh, main offset or something main work plane okay and then you can click it now you can see it is first work plane has changed as a name and second one is activated automatically instead of going to activate and double clicking renaming that you will avoid to use these options uh, i hope you understand uh, for this particular first options like the what category we have created for to the folder and the renaming uh, of the tools for this particular options okay i'm uh, going into the second category of the macros uh, this you can see the second one is for to the curve and the pattern macros. when uh, you want to extract some of the curves or maybe some of the measuring tools as well as the you want to automate the setup and uh, top and bottom work plane creations then as well as the boundary creations this are all the macros is the second category and i'll just go through on the second options just taken into the same example okay and and now i will go to this option uh, for the second one to the curve and the pattern creations the curve one is suppose you want to make any kind of the center line curve for this particular the surface suppose you can see surface is bigger is on this area and the smaller in on this side i want to extract the center line of this one just you select this one and you can go and click uh, to create a center line of the pattern now we can see the with help of the macros and it is able to extract at the center line of this particular surfaces you can able to see this particular surface was extracted the center line sometime you want to extract the u and v pattern like uh, suppose i am selected this surface i want to use the v pattern now we can see the v pattern is extracted here this one is uh, extracted from the u pattern suppose i will change this as a uh, v now we can see it is extracted only the center line of this this may be can use for the, the revolve or you want to make any the center line tool path it is possible to use this are all the two macros uh, especially for to the creating of the center line and moving into the uh, another uh, the macros that is for to the uh, measuring of the circles the measuring of the circles usually we will go to the home or maybe uh, we will go to the measure and then then we will go to the this option inside of that one only one click using this options uh, go to the curve and click on to the measure options just you click and it will automatically take into the circle measures just you click on the three point this will uh, again it is going to save your time to exactly measuring of the circle center uh, start point end point mid point as well as the center dimensions this all going to show you in the one click uh going back uh onto the options like a, a model the how uh, we are creating the boundary for the model just the uh normal method is selecting and we are going into the boundary and creating the boundary that will take some four or five steps to creating the boundary but using these options just select the surface click this model uh, like this uh, particular uh, shortcut button and it will extracting the boundary now you can see the what are the surface you are selected and it will quickly extracted the boundary on these options simply just select and extract it is now created the boundary in the single click and it is going to give you the option and uh, next one is for to the new sketch how you are going entering into the new sketch maybe you are creating the boundary or the sum of the boundary go to the user defined then then you are going into the new sketch or maybe you are uh, creating the pattern and then you are going to the edit this is the general method you are using for to the steps to go for the editing of the sketch but using this options only one click just you go to click it and it is moving into the uh, editing of the options now you can not require any pattern not require any boundary it will automatically move into the sketch without whatever you want to draw or maybe you want to uh, extract anything 
you can extract and uh, create a pattern or the boundary just you click on the, uh, into the uh, new sketch option here and it will take background and it will extract it for this particular boundary option for the new sketch okay i hope this this is going to reduce uh, automatically with the programming time because of the day to day activity the clicking or more it will uh, consuming the time and going the inside of the options this is going to save your time whenever using this the options okay uh, after that new sketch and then the top uh, setting and as well as the bottom setting okay now i want to set my work plane the top setting usually you are selecting and going to the work plane and uh, setting for that one i want to avoid that one just simply uh, after importing the model just i can say the bottom setting just you click this option the shortcut key and now you can see my work plane was created at the bottom of the model without any selection or going for the any other options simply just click that options it will automatically calculate the block and the bottom of the uh, model and it will set the work plane at the bottom of the model and also the same at the top now you can see it is in the bottom you want to set quickly at the top just you click it here and it is going to set as a top of this model now you can see and also it is in a your work plane is going to activate automatically and you can see the name of the work plane here and also you can see the name that is a, what are the name they like a top one or something it will automatically rename that one and you can understand that work plane as a top instead of doing the manual work okay uh after this moving into the third category that is the uh, third category of the pattern is for to the documentation of the macros like this this macros is useful for some of the documentation purpose like uh, where can i see for the toolpath history when the toolpath was calculated or maybe the time and date as well as some of the uh, project change into the unit and mm or you want to take the screenshot of the particular uh, open project or something we we want to take for to the set of sheets or something you want to save that particular snapshots and the uh, quickly you can able to do for the documentation i will go on to the power mill side i'm going to explain you for to the third category for the documentation first one is uh, take into the snapshot now we can see this is a snapshot or the current view i want to save the snapshot inside the project the general method is going into the home or maybe clicking some of the options and you are taking uh, the snapshots instead of that one i'll just use for this the shortcut button just you click it this will take into the top view automatically and it will extract the top view and it will save inside your project that is a snapshot is going to save inside your project that you can use for your uh documenting purpose this is the particularly it will capture for the top view instead of the putting into the top view and then you are going and saving this top view uh, you can use this only one click and and it is going to take into the top view and it is in a capturing into the top view okay once uh this done uh maybe some but the next one is going to change the mm and inches uh instead of going the uh, file and option then you are changing into the mm and unit inches then you can just simply change into this one okay uh after that uh the most important is like line width you want to change your line width sum up sometime you can see this is the tool path is look like uh, the small width you want to change this one for to the any kind of the zooming or you want to show in the presentations or maybe you can highlight uh, the particular tool path to show on the operator or something you can use this the line width change this line width presently i want to increase two percent or the 20 percent you can see now the line width was increases in uh, your tool path i'll just maintain as a 10 you can see now the 10 this is the what the line width the tool path line width is going to change the as you required now i will change into as it is one and it is coming into the normal the tool path. okay uh next one is uh time and the date uh i need to understand uh, my tool path calculation time the how much time will take on this particular just to select this tool path 
click this option like the shortcut menu and it will show you the how much time is taking to calculate this toolpath like it is taking around the two seconds and when was the toolpath was calculated and the what date this will show you the information this can uh, understand the toolpath or maybe your system is working properly or maybe it is taking any hanging or anything it is problem facing that all you can able to cross check the toolpath calculations time and also you can understand for to the particular toolpath to calculate it will take how much time and how you are utilizing our computers that all you can able to document it on the uh, the uh, project creation time okay uh, next one is toolpath history the toolpath history will give you the total uh, uh, toolpath history because of uh, we need to understand the what is the tool you are using what is the step over on that you can go to every options or maybe we need to explore like this or inside of that one i want to explore the history of the toolpath some of the some 10 toolpaths you can see i have selected some uh, 10 toolpaths just to simply click it and and it will extract all the 10 toolpaths and it will show you the detail of the what are the toolpath you were selected the first toolpath was i have selected and you can see this is extracting all the details instead of going the inside of the each toolpath and it is extracting now and it will give you the details the first one is given for the strategy is using the raster and this is a tolerance and this is the diameter and the uh, feed rate as well as the rpm the how much stock you are used for that particular option what is the lead and lead out uh, that that all uh, it will show uh, also it will show you the simulation time the how much time it will take for to run on this the this all uh, the options in one click it will extract for the what are the toolpath you are selected i have selected uh, these are all the toolpaths and it is giving on this and also it will give you the total summary of the pro, uh, the water toolpath you were selected it is taking one hour 61 minutes the the each toolpath is added the uh, time and it is giving the total and also you can select this all and you can copy you want just to copy and you can paste into some excel sheet or you want to uh, uh, give it to other guys these are all the parameter i have used for this particular uh, toolpaths uh, they can uh, use for the documentary purpose that's why we kept as into the document engine side on this particular options okay i hope this is the third category uh you got some clarification the how how it will work and uh, these are all the options okay moving into the ppt back uh this is the uh, fourth category the uh, like a toolpath editing and optimization the still uh, the power mill is having a more capability on the toolpath editing on the shortcut buttons what the standard button is available but apart from that still we have the uh, it is possible to optimize the toolpath for to the editing or some of the lead and link changing as well as the uh, offsetting the x y and then the giving the different thickness or you want to plus or minus thickness that all you can possible to use and as well as the offset the toolpath in the z direction instead of only the x y you can offset the toolpath in the z direction okay this this all going to cover on the fourth cat okay uh, fourth one is the toolpath editing the first one is deleting of the stock model we are struggling to delete the stock model when the number of toolpath is added like the customer will ask suppose i want to uh, delete the toolpath or the maybe the stock model what can i do the uh, previously i have calculated the roughing toolpath and i need to add my roughing toolpath into stock model and the uh, and the stock model was created as per this and i have added my uh, rest roughing toolpath then i have added my stock model into rest roughing toolpath suppose i am going to delete this one it is asking you want to the uh, delete or you want to remove the toolpath from the stock model suppose i have calculated some 10 toolpaths then you want to remove manually for all the 10 toolpaths and then only can possible to edit the stock model or maybe delete the stock model instead of that one we have the very the uh, simplified method to deleting of the stock model just you click on this deleting of the stock model the which stock model you want to delete because of we are having a number of stock models uh, they're having more than five stock models i want to delete the first stock model just you uh, select this one and just you click this button 
and it will ask you the tool path number three is going to uncalculate okay and it is going to yes then what will happen you want to delete or you want to keep your stock suppose i will say no then my stock model one number is going to delete now now you can see there is no stock model number one but my tool path number t uh, three as a uncalculated and it will again you can go and you can calculate like you have more than 10 tool paths in the one click you can able to change your all the tool path and the as well as the, your stock model is going to delete or maybe you want to use for the don't want to delete also it is possible to kept it as it is only it is removing the tool path from the stock model and it is keeping as a empty stock model okay that this options as possible to save your time as you going to use for day-to-day -day activities and then go for to the number of tool paths i want to find out the how many tool paths are there inside the project because of i need to understand uh, the project uh, maybe the size or maybe the the number of tool path or tool need to be arranged on this particular options just i will click on these options uh, for to the number of tool paths once i will click on to the number of tool path and and it will show you this is the 15 tool paths are there in this particular project the instead of manually counting the tool paths just clicking the one button and you can able to uh, identify the 15 <coughs> tool paths are uh, there in the uh, inside the projects after this uh, i will just activate the or maybe i will calculate this rest wrapping tool path to using the reference tool path suppose i'll go to the reference tool path is two just i will calculate now my tool path was calculating the where the previous tool path is left out but not for that i'm going to use for that now we can see they having a small segment in the tool path. Suppose you can see these are all the small segment. But usually uh, we are doing the unwanted tool paths are manually selecting and and uh, we are deleting. Like uh, the this is the general method for to the deleting of the tool path. But uh, this particular micros is going to help you to pick for the small uh, tool paths the what distance I am going to mention. Suppose I will select here. Uh, on that i want to delete my tool path less than 10 mm entry for the length of the segment just i will select 10 mm and you can see now this tool path was deleted the previous tool path was having the these are all the small small uh moments you want to delete that now you can see the new tool path we don't have and also you can see the previous tool path is having the lot of the small tool path moments and now now the this is giving where is the less than 10 mm or uh, the tool path was automatically select and it will delete the less than 10 mm the category tool path uh, this will save you when uh, we are going to use the manual selection you can avoid that this you can use for the roughing or finishing the whatever tool path there in your project going into the next options uh like reset lead and links this i have calculated one tool path you can see now here having a lot of lead and links you are used i want to uh, reset for this one need to go and change into the tool path connection and we need to look on the what option you are used and that all uh, we need to look and we need to change the manually to reset your uh, the linking of the tool path for this particular uh, the tool path or uh, the micros are going to help you reset your lead and link in the single click just you click it now you can see my tool path was resetting the all the lead and links in the single click the what are the option i have used now you can see it is now taken as a lead and links as a none and as well as the links is uh, scheme this is going to reset the lead and links in the single click the usually i will go to the this options and you can see here the lead and links now it is changed into the none instead of the horizontal arc or something none none and the state was changed as of the the shortcut uh, options uh, it is going to change into the lead and this will save you a lot of time uh, when you are doing the programming okay and next one is thickness steps i'm going to activate another tool path 
you can see whenever I am doing the toolpath for the side, I can see this is my the side toolpath. Suppose I am going to use for to the side X, Y offset. The uh, I cannot able to uh, give the, the stock or maybe the number of uh, step over in the side. We, we need to create only one toolpath on uh, the side of this particular option was selected and, and it is going to calculate the toolpath for the side for the single. Now you can see, but uh, sometime I have a more uh, stock or maybe I want to use the number of step downs in the side. Maybe you can see now the toolpath was created in the side. Uh, on this particular, the toolpath editing macros are going to uh, offset the thickness. It is asking enter the start of the thickness means I want to do the machining from the uh, for the zero. Then you want to end the thickness or how much material you want to remove. I want to remove two mm, uh, mm materials just to enter here the two mm and the how many depth of cut you want to use like the maximum. But suppose I'll use point two depth of cut. What will happen? This this is going to create now the point two point two toolpaths and it is offsetting in the x y direction. The without any the effort, we are getting the very good toolpath uh, for to the side offset. This lot of customer will ask these questions. Maybe they can use for this micros uh, to use for offsetting their toolpath into the x y directions. Now it is offsetting. Uh, it will take time because of it will offsetting the each toolpath and it is going to merging into the single toolpath. Now we can see I have used the two mm stock now the point two point two I have offsetted here the pipe passes here the pipe passes. like a total 10 passes was created on this particular and and also it will run from the starting it will not take from the uh, end it will take from the start toolpath and you can see this is the first toolpath was taken and it will run from the outside then we'll go to the inside this this is going to <clears throat> help you uh, when uh, you are using for to the number of side stocks instead of going to the each toolpath then you are merging into the uh, uh, particular options then uh, the each toolpath you will need to calculate for the stock then you need to merge now instead of that one you can avoid that to use this particular options okay uh, next one is transform toolpath the transform toolpath is specially uh, it will offset your toolpath into the z direction you can see the editing of the toolpath also available to transform your toolpath uh, the options in the transform toolpath but that will transform mostly on the x and uh, y now now this particular options we uh, we will use for uh, transforming of the toolpath in the z direction and it will ask the enter the number of copies i want to offset 10 copies and you want to offset the distance suppose i want to offset for the some 20 mm now we can see my toolpath was offsetted and also it will create a separate path for to the 20 mm distance in the z direction and it will run this just i show the example but you can go and apply uh, the whatever the suppose you are doing the toolpath in the side or somewhere here you are doing the toolpath in the side you want to create the bottom toolpath you want to offset it or sometime uh, you can use it uh, to offsetting in the z direction Okay, the next option is for the toolpath editing to editing of the thickness. Okay, I will take the uh, different example for that. I will use for this particular options uh, like the toolpath editing to editing of the spark gap. Now you can see my toolpath is having uh, different spark gaps. This will help you for more on the electrode manufacturer where they are using for the electrode manufacturing because of they will use for the roughing and finishing electrode. The roughing maybe they will use for the point one spark gap or maybe they will go for the finishing for OPI spark gap. For that purpose, the inside of making all the different toolpaths or maybe all the different projects that you can go for. Now I have used the point three stock for the roughing and can see for the finishing uh, I have used the thickness for to the zero. Now I want to use 0.1 or the OPI spar gap minus value. The, what, what this particular option is going to support just to click it it will ask what is the new spark gap. My toolpath was calculated in the zero zero. Uh, there is no spa, uh, negative thickness in the toolpath. Now I will use the 0.2 or the 0.1 minus value. Just you click into the 0.1 then you enter it 
and it will recalculate your all the three tool paths and it will give you the uh, offsetted spark cap before I use the point three on the roughing. Now it is going to take into the point one and finishing is going to take into minus point one as well as the both the tool path corner and the this. This this will help you uh, to use the different spark gap in the single project and you can take away the NC program uh, using the minus spark gap into the different. Uh, this this also it is not only for the electrode manufacturer can general application also you can use it. Uh, you can explain the customer. This is the option is available. You can go and you can use wherever you want to uh, creating the multiple uh, thickness or the multiple options you are going to using. Now you can see it is added into the my uh, point one. Now you can see it is added in the bottom the minus point one. Also you can see in the tool path. Now uh, it is the tool path was calculated with the minus point one thickness. Okay, instead of the zero, I uh, yeah use the, also you can use the normal to zero. Then you need to enter here the zero. Now it is calculating the tool path uh, the without any negative thickness and it will generate for to the zero thickness. Okay, uh, I hope you understand uh, the tool path editing uh, options. Uh, these are all the deleting of the stock model, number of tool paths, bleed and link, uh, reset, side offset, as well as the editing of the transforming in the jet, as well as the editing of the spark gap or maybe the thickness on the uh, tool path. Okay, moving back uh, on to the uh, particular oh, uh, PPT. The, now it is in a simulation and verification options. The simulation and Verification tool path will help you to reduce the verification of your tool path. See, now I have activated my tool path. The next one is simulation. The collusion check means the what are the tool path you want to select it. You want to check only collusion just to simply check it and it will ask the uh, holder clearance and then you'll ask for the sank clearance and it will show you this tool path is or it will automatically check all the tool paths the any tool path is having a problem and it will automatically identify it will give you the uh, color code like the this blue tick mark is uh, checked with the collusion R red is having a problem in the tool path and this is the white color is there is no holder collide only it is in a go check like that you can able to uh, one single click the entire project can check it uh, on the both the option uh, like a goge and collusion check uh, because of the usually we will go and we will verify it uh, to using for to the editing options or maybe you are going into the verification tool uh, there you can selecting your uh, the verification of the tool path then you are selecting the manual for each and every options instead of that one just you go to uh, this uh, customize toolbar and you can click this one and it is going to give you the the quick result on that particular macros and next one is uh, collusion check only the active tool path suppose i have uh, going to activate this particular tool path you can see now i will just go to setting maybe i will change my the thickness or something uh, i'll just change into one calculated the tool path now the tool path was calculated now i want to check this is having any collusion on this tool path just to activate it and select it and it is asking again the sank and collusion holder parent. We can see this tool path uh, having the holder and sank collusion on this particular area and it will quickly show you the color and this is the uh, tool path is having a collusion problem on that particular the instead of going and checking or now I will select an other tool path. I will activate this tool path then I can cross check now this the uh, again to ask the clearance for the sank and holder now we can see this is the safe tool path tool path is safe there is no problem in the tool path like that will give you the alarm message on this particular option next one is simulate all tool path the simulate all tool path is going to help you to simulate the tool path in the single click the instead of going and adding all the uh, nc pro uh, all the a tool path into the inside NC program. You want to avoid that one. Just use this macros to simulate all the tool paths. First one will do the drilling. You can see after this uh, we'll we'll do the top drilling. Now it is going into the side machining. 
now the tool path has taken the after that you can see it is activating on the top raster tool path now it is doing for the top raster like this will uh, activate all the tool paths and it will do the simulation in the single click okay just i will stop this because of all of you can understand the what is the use of this simulate all the tool paths to uh to simulating all the tool path in the single click we need to use this particular and after this we have some of the general macros uh using for this uh after this simulations uh they're having a, some of the general macros uh it is available on the different folder like this is the general application of the Suppose now uh, I can see the first option is 2D ramp. Suppose you created any of the tool paths or the pattern. Suppose you can see now I have created the pattern tool path for this particular the pattern. You can see this is the pattern I am going to activate. The pattern number is 13. Yeah, uh, I have written the name of the power mill. Okay, what what will do usually when I will calculate any the pattern tool path? Okay, it it will take the one tool path the pattern was calculated and and now we can see that uh, tool path was calculated but this tool path is not having any the lead and link option now i will make into this option as a none you can see calculated now you can see the tool path was calculated on this but i want to run my tool path some of the depth or i want to uh, go my tool path as a ramp. Uh, I'll just switch off this one. Now you can click this particular option for the general. Click it here and it will ask the how much depth you want to go. I want to go my engrave as 1 mm or my tool path as a 1 mm. Again, it will ask the step down. I'll go for point 0.1. My, my tool path was going to add the ramping on the top of this. You can see the, the tool path will go continuously and up to the bottom with the point to depth of cut with the two uh, what are the depth i have used and it will run like this this will help you your the 2d tool pass to continuous movement and and i'll just make a simulation now you can see the tool path was moving into the continuously it is going to add the ramp instead of going directly or maybe it will do the tool path for that particular this will help you uh, when you are doing the uh, pattern finishing tool pass, especially uh, the uh, one pass you want to offset a number of passes that also the tool path connection is uh, having a problem uh, to connect the tool path. Uh, you can use these options. Uh, maybe the tool path will go continuously without any lifting of your pass. This uh, this tool path and also uh, you can use the plus or minus values. Suppose uh, you can go here options uh, for the thickness. I will use the zero. Then the tool path will create in the top or suppose you go to the minus then the tool path. Uh, this is the uh, use of the 2D uh, macros for the 2D tool paths and, and, and it is for especially for the pattern tool path you can use for this ramp option. And you want to set the black background just you click these options and it is going to set your black background on the project you want to take any screenshot using for this particular document you want to take the screenshots so you can take it uh, with the black background just you save it and it is take onto the top view and with the black background you want to reset the previous just use this one and then it is going to come back into the previous um background of the UI. And the another options for the general applications I can use for creating the block for the selected color. Suppose in the project having a different colors. Suppose I will just click this one. You can see now it is highlighting the two colors. One is black and another one is the gray color. Suppose I want to create the block uh, only for the black color. You can transform this into this particular uh, option and, and, and you can able to calculate the block for only that particular black color was selected to creating this to transform this and and you can resume and it is possible to uh, select and uh, resume this and then you can click okay now you can see my block was calculated only for that black surfaces the what are the black surface was selected 
Okay. Uh, after this, uh, you want to check for the plat uh, as well as the vertical surface. Sometime you want to see the what are the vertical surface are there, the how you want to uh, how you want to cross check uh, for that particular plat or vertical surfaces. Just you click this one, and it will automatically identify the plat as well as the vertical surfaces and it will automatically select those surfaces. Now we can see it will find out this are all the horizontal surface and the other surface as well as the vertical surface. And also you can just say control K and it will show you these are all the horizontal surfaces and the vertical surfaces for just uh, for the reference you want to making the toolpath the wherever the plat area you want to use to understand the plat surface in the model or the vertical surface in the model you can use for this particular macros and you can utilize uh, display plats. Uh, it is going to just uh, on this particular options and it is going to display for this plat options. This is the multiple colors and it is going to display. And uh, uh, last uh, options for to the triangle, uh, the triangle uh, for going to offsetting for to the uh, Triangles, the what the uh, now this is the new option was came up. You want to see the triangle mesh triangle already on the model. You can able to check it using this particular the options. Just you click it and it is going to come. Instead of you are going into the drawing options, then you space bar or something you are using, you can use this. Okay, I hope uh, I have covered the uh, maximum what I'm going to uh, show you on this particular micro workshops. I hope you are uh, useful for this until you are going to uh, implement on the customer side, uh, then uh, they can take some feedback the how the micros are going to utilize and the what time they are going to save on using this particular micros. First, uh, you have to implement on your side, then only it is going to possible to explain or to particularly this particular options. And also uh, once you created the shortcut buttons, like uh, where I can going to use for this shortcut buttons, like I want to export this particular uh, shortcut buttons or the options just to select here and go to the export option just to go to export and it is possible to save that uh, shortcut button whenever you want to import this into the other systems it is possible to import it once you save and you export it afterwards you want to import you can go and select that particular options and you can import it once you back this all the options will coming as it is only you have to cross check your path the where you are the path was mentioned the micros were loaded from this particular path you have to cross check or maybe you can edit your path the where your micros was saved you can edit your path and the micros can start it because i, I can create this all your own custom buttons maybe uh, you are going to the customer side they they cannot required to spend for to creating again just you change this the path where the uh, the micros was loaded on that particular uh, computer you can change it then all the each micros options and it is going to update on their computer and it is going to create the shortcut uh, keyboard or the button to importing these options that is the easiest method to going to uh, go and implement on the micros at the customer because of the each and every micros the creations it will take a lot of time for creating the individual uh, keys instead of that one or uh, to go to export and uh, save it and you can go and you can edit and modify your path the way your micros was saved i think up to this you can modify it the after one you'll take the micros names uh, as it is by default only this much you can modify the path i have saved into the d drive you are saved into the different die or uh, drive or something you can able to change it and you can quickly you can uh, modify as per your requirement okay moving uh into the uh api uh thank you very much i am going to hand over my presentation to rajesh kanna uh, uh, he will take forward. Uh, maybe in the end of our presentation, we will take the question together and uh, we will uh, take on uh, your feedback or maybe you can have any questions. You can uh, ask our questions or maybe you can chart the questions on the chat window. Uh, hand over to Rajesh.
uh, uh, Suresh, before Rajesh comes in, uh, can you also show uh, this macros where uh, where it is there in your system? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that uh, that we have added uh, the last slide uh, of my course, like in the uh, my PPT, I have just put into the end of my presentation. See, I have added this into the different folders, uh, like this is the micros folder optimization. Inside that one, they have a micros, and uh, I'll just show you on the exact uh, the options, the, the what all the micros are saved in my computer. Okay, uh, I'll just open this on particular path uh, on desktop. I'll just open this. You can see the first one is the micros folder option. Inside this are all the folders are uh, this micros are available, and the curve and the uh, pattern creations. This is the pattern and curve. Then measuring toolbar are available. Then the documentation. This are all the some seek micros are available inside the documentation. Then the toolpath editing. This are all. And also I have created the shortcut. Uh, button for the custom you can see these are the custom buttons uh, i have created just you open your this one and you can able to uh, edit your path uh, as i shown you can edit your path where you are pasted your micros then you can save this one then you go to import and you can import this are all the five uh, six uh, shortcut uh, buttons was created on using this are all the up to uh, six micros one is general and another uh, the, all the five micros. Uh, I hope this information is helpful uh, to implement this micros on the customer as well as the your side. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, over to Rajesh. Can you stop sharing your screen? Okay. Now, uh, Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, gents. Uh, thanks again uh, to attending this session. It's really thank. Uh, we have to say thanks to Suresh. First of all, he had put a lot of effort in, uh, you know, in uh, sort out all those macros. These macros are already available in our uh, different places, but uh, he had sorted out and he had uh, show them application how to do it, and uh, he, had, he had given you the folder and a team folder that maybe you can access from that. And we have to say thanks for that. And uh, starting from here, people may think, so I have the macro. Uh, yes, I understood. But what if the customer is asking something different and uh, I need to change the macro, how to edit that macro? Um, so all those things. So of course, an API is that uh, we will see uh, later. Uh, there are three APIs are there, something like WISE, uh, that means clamping devices, how to import those things and all. We will see later. But, and before that, uh, if if the if you are going to the custom place and customer is asking some minor edit, how to do it? So that's a big question actually, because uh, sometimes the same macro cannot be used in all the partner in, sorry, customer in. Okay, they may ask for different. So for that, actually, uh, what I'm coming to say here is, uh, so everyone knows about, uh, uh, knows about where the macro is available, I believe, actually uh, how to learn from that. So inside your Power, uh, Power Mill window, uh, so there is an option called uh, documentation and uh, there is called macro programming guide actually. So you can, uh, if, it is, uh, if it is fine, you can able to download this actually. So it will take you through your, uh, website and uh, and it will it can have different like mtd user guide and there are several other things are there and uh, if you do have time you can download it so that you no need to access internet every time you can download it and keep it handy actually so but uh, if i open this okay uh, actually if you open this actually uh, you may have uh, you know um, you have you may have to learn um, many things okay right the pro programming guide will help you in uh, you know different things i hope everyone knows about uh, recording a macro inside power mill okay right so that is very simple i'm not going to touch that one 
So very simple is right click, you can record the macro and you can save it and you can use it further. Uh, so, but I'm not going to touch that part. So you know about that actually. So when it comes to next part, simple editing, actually simple editing or maybe simple commands, which is very useful and handy whenever necessary, um, that will be, you know, it will very be useful when you are, uh, uh, when you are going to the customer place, okay, right? Though there are different things are there, actually, I'm going to cover a little bit in each part so that, uh, because the, the the content itself is a huge one, it's almost content 147 page. So uh, we are not going to touch everything, but at least to edit uh, those part, you can able to do it. So the first one, uh, you want to understand uh, the variables, okay? So what is variables actually? So uh, so if you go to the next one, so there are different variables available. So, so please understand the thing which is very uh, necessary when you are creating a macro actually. Uh, you are, I'm not going to ask you or build a huge macro or whatever it is. At least if you know a simple editing or maybe uh, you if you want to change something within the macro, it will be very useful. Uh, these tips will be uh, helpful, more helpful for you. So there are different uh, variables are available actually. Okay, so here, so that means uh, from start from one to uh, until the number in positive direction, no zeros here. Real numbers, of course, you have negative decimal places, zero, whatever you can put, you can do it. String actually is something like only alphabets, okay? And a Boolean function is either true or false, okay? Then entity is something like, whatever the references available within power mill okay so i will show you in each example so that you can understand how it will work and object okay object is something like you can give some parameters within uh, you know the something like block connections or or, or maybe in uh, something like lead and link something else or something. so these are the variables available okay so let us see how it will work uh, from the beginning okay so I will open a simple macro, uh, which is message info. I have nothing having actually here. Okay, I do not have anything. So I'm going to run, uh, write it simple so that it, you should understand the basic thing. Uh, but the, the document contains uh, every detailed part. If you are in, really interested, at least if you spend uh, a two hours a day, uh, within a week, you can able to at least from uh, basic to moderate, you can able to move from this stage to that stage, okay? So the first thing actually, uh, we have to understand some basic commands, how it will work so that it will be useful when, while editing the macro, okay? So the first one is something uh, is resulted oriented. Uh, resulted oriented means what you are going to get. Sometimes, you know, the huge macro have performed so well, but uh, the result is, uh, need to be show very in a good part okay so or maybe have to pop up or giving a warning something like that so for the, so how it will work it's an empty empty uh, macro so i am going to write okay string because string is my uh, string is alphabet okay i told you uh, and uh, you can use dollar symbol okay and info this is info is this is the variable info is my variable so what do you want to do it actually so for first I want to say it's an uh, something like um, how are you actually okay just a simple simple thing okay uh, before that you have to put input okay this is your command input how are you and uh, you can to say uh, this one uh, how are you is your message okay this may be very we will see next part okay so we had uh, you are going to input uh, or maybe what is the message of what is this one actually maybe um and what is your uh, this one actually um what is your output okay so output is actually message info okay message info dollar info actually because this is what so once the uh, input is done so what uh, output actually so that is called message info okay so your command is info. So because the same thing have to be called here, the dollars and the symbol is have to be called here, okay? I think hope you can understand. And uh, if you run macro, okay? So if you run the macro uh, message info, 
So it will ask you, how are you actually, right? So say, I am fine, okay? I am fine, okay? So if you input, your message will come to you, okay? So that means whatever you input, you are taking back, okay? That's how Power Mill or maybe any message is working actually, right? So this is a simple thing, uh, a simple macro, how you are going to uh, give the value, okay, to the variable. So this is the in dollar info is a kind of a string variable and you are taking back the information from that actually, okay? So message info is giving a pop-up message, okay? So this is how it will work, okay? For let's say example, uh, we had seen this in a, in a uh, many macros actually, okay? Many macros like example, maybe um, if you go to the examples of this one, uh, maybe number of toolpath, okay? So number of toolpath, okay? So, uh, so there is an option called for each. I will come back to you later. So after that, what is saying is after calculating number of toolpath, it is saying, okay, message info. If there is no toolpath, print this, okay? Else if you print this, okay? Or else if you print this, okay? What, what is the conditions? So we are giving the conditions. If zero, if uh, counting is zero, is equal to is equal to zero, you print this. If it is one, that is, one tool path in the project. If it is more than one tool path, then you have to print this section. So this is the way we are going to print the message. Okay. So it's a one of the example. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we will try to do some, uh, this is a string variable. We will try to do it with uh, some, uh, some kind of functions, actually expressions. Okay. So what I'm going to do is real, uh, the real is actually, you know, real is a number, not the alphabet. Okay. So real, a is equal to, uh, now I, I don't know, because if I say five, it will be constant. Okay, let's see how, what will happen. Real uh, dollar is equal to, um, sorry, real B is equal to uh, uh, another five. So what I'm going to do is real dollar AB, because we are going to do something, the uh, expressions, uh, maybe dollar a okay uh, multiply sorry dollar a multiply dollar b okay then uh, message okay right we have to do the message right okay message info uh, dollar a b right because a b is our uh, a b is our string to calculate a variable and b variable okay save it okay let us uh, run this one actually. So why I'm saying I'm why I'm showing this? It's a simple one to learn, but when you combining uh, this different different variables and functions, then you can make a, a big one actually. Oh sorry, what's the error here? Uh, okay, so here it's a see variable is actually we already shown that. Okay, just I will quote this. Okay, uh, so it's actually we cannot use this. I'm I'm sure I'm going to share this one. Why it is no, giving is error dollar, is dollar b. Sorry, dollar b it should be. Where it's dollar b only, right? No, so no, I'm, real, I'm showing real, real a b multiplies. Third line, third line, second word. Yeah, it's what dollar. Oh, dollar b. So still, uh, it won't it it won't be a solvable one. Solve sorry for that. So if you run this, uh, it is giving 25, right? Sorry for that. It is giving 25, but this is not the solution for that because the values are fixed here, right? Five and five is fixed, but in our day-to-day uh, -day activity, the values are keep on changing. The tools, tool diameter is changing, maybe tolerance is changing, uh, and maybe a step over or step, step down, it's change, keep on changing. So we cannot keep it the value here. So what you have to do is again, so you have to say input, okay, right? Input, and uh, you can open a question this uh, this uh, apostrophe and say um, in uh, enter uh, value a, right? Value a. Similarly here. Similarly here, it is a value B actually, okay? So now you can save this, 
Okay, it's because the variable is going to change every time. So what we need to do is we are going to input that one. So what is value A? Value A is five and my value A is eight, maybe the answer is 40. I think uh, you can hope you can understand the way it works. Okay, first, this is a very, very basic one. And uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe if you want to give some more informated one, actually, informated one means, see the message is message that is a 40, right? So you want you need to add something uh, which is uh, which you need to give something actually okay right so what you do is open a bracket here oh, sorry I open a apostrophe here what you can say is um, value of a and b right a and b because we are giving some uh, more information a and b okay and uh, space addition actually and you can give the value uh, value of a and b for oh, sorry for that actually sorry this one sorry sorry we have to give the value of here okay, first thing um, this is uh, is this is the function actually so what you are going to do is here um, open this one and uh, say value of a and b right Okay, and uh, you can say uh, some addition here because we are not going to add, uh, we are going to combine the message. Okay, we are going to combine the message as well as the result. Okay, now if you go and write that one. Okay, message uh, A is five and uh, B is eight. And you can see that some more message is coming actually, right? The value A and B is, is maybe you can put equal to symbol here, or maybe you can put an empty symbol also. Value of A and B is 40. So it is more informative now, actually, what is the macro is about. So that's how it will work. Okay, so that's how this is, is working actually. And uh, if you go into this one, uh, there is some, uh, there is some something like you can say um, statements are there actually. If you go to if -fill statement, so now we had given some something there actually. So statement is something like you can say if else or if it is more than uh, two conditions, you can go if else, uh, else if actually, if and else if statement. So that is what about here actually, okay? So how it will work, okay? So again, the same thing here. And now uh, what we are going to do is putting if conditions here, packet open. Uh, so what is going to this? Uh, I'm going to validate dollar A is uh, whether it is bigger than dollar B actually. So it's a very simple one, okay? Very simple one, and uh, you can you are going to open up uh, this um, one more thing actually, uh, one more bracket here, and say uh, message message info. This is all actually whatever you are seeing. It is written in the macro. So if you want to edit it, you can edit it. That's what we are going to say about here. Uh, info is um, uh, uh, A is A is uh, greater than B, right? Very simple, very simple actually, okay? So I'm going to close this one. So close this. Else, what do you want to do actually? Else, what do you want to do? If it is, uh, if it is, uh, if A is smaller than B, else, okay, right, right. else again, um, you, can, you are going to open a bracket here if you want, okay, bracket open. Uh, you copy this, same message, and you can say smaller actually, right, smaller as some, yeah. okay, then you are going to uh, close it actually. That is, they are going to do, uh, a condition, two conditions. If A is greater than B, print this message, okay? If A is smaller than B, print this message. That's the thing actually, okay? Very simple one uh, to understand it. So if you run this actually, so it will ask uh, the values first I'm going to input is five. The second I'm input is eight, okay? So, oh, sorry for that, sorry. I think I have to put this. 
because each and every uh, every uh, in this one is will give you an error. So you have to try it a little bit, okay? And uh, A is five and A is eight. But that now this one, sorry. <laughs> I think I made a little bit small. Okay. Okay, the same thing. Um, if I run this macro. Um, just a minute, what matters the cycles? Just a minute. Okay, what? So I just copy this one because I, I maybe a small this one will give you an error. What is the error? Maybe that space. Okay. Space. Sorry for that. Actually, so I run this. So A is as uh, five, and B is eight. So uh, as eight is bigger, sorry, B is bigger. So it is printing the second message. A is smaller than B. So that's about this actually. Okay. So then maybe you have some other options. Now you are inputting the message. Okay. But if there are tool, uh, you have to select the tool, then for that the tool path, and you have to apply something. Uh, maybe you want to apply for the selected tool path, or you maybe do something, okay? For example, for that, actually, what you have to do is string uh, dollar tool path, right? It's equal to, so what you are going to is input, that is, uh, it is, it, these all this uh, document is available, content is available in your, uh, this one. So entity, uh, uh, sorry, entity, okay. Tool path, okay. And your message is, uh, what is your message? Uh, message is select uh, tool path. Okay, right. So this is your string actually. So this is what about entity? Entity means let me see how it will works. So if you run this one actually, message info. So what will happen? It will pop up you actually something, whatever the tool paths you had created, it will give an option to select from here rather than you know inputting the uh, variables. So that is about actually. So once you select it tick, okay? So then you can add, some more uh, the selected selected tool path what you want to do actually right for example uh, for the selected tool path uh, i need to apply it collision okay so uh, this is about no, one more uh, is about uh, this is not this one sorry but that actually for selected yeah this one so this is about don't think okay i will open in a notepad so that you can understand in colors okay Okay, I'll open this. Okay. Okay. So now the thing is, um, uh, what you want to do is you want to select from uh, you know drop down menu and you want to do it actually. There are two methods are available in selection. One is uh, this kind of drop menu. One is run if you death. This is a drop menu. What you want to do? Okay. And another one is you can select the tool path. And you can right click you find user defined menu actually okay there are two methods are available for this the first method is you can write a macro okay so the macro is something like this okay then what you want to do is something like you can say i want to do collision check okay and can input collision and you can do it so further commands you can do it actually but when you come to that uh, user defined menu actually there are two methods i told you right so generally, when you're installing Mac PowerMill, it won't come to you, this uh, last user-defined menu for you, actually. For anything, even for tool, okay? Uh, if for maybe pattern boundary, okay? So sometimes you cannot be able to find this one because I have not configured it. So presently, I will do it for the, this one. Let me show you how to do it. The first thing you have to do it is, you have to keep a folder called PMill. Uh, so if you go to that customized paths, uh, you have to you have to uh, find a PML folder actually. The PML folder is somewhere uh, in my in my in my laptop. It is available under PowerMill rolling demo. Okay. So inside this, you may have different uh, files. So that's what I am selecting here. This one is the first first step. You have to do it. 
okay right you want to select the pmil folder first okay inside the pmil folder okay sorry you can able to find uh, you know different different uh, files one is for tool path one is for stock model and uh, different things but when you say you find that uh, user menu uh, it's an xml file, okay just open it so now you can able to see what are the things are have to be you know pop up which under which one if this is something like right click user define, define menu if you are not selecting anywhere you can right click the empty space these are all the things like uh, tool path line width background change remove lock file macros maybe sometimes all those things can be configured here actually for example line width okay so you don't create a new one you just copy and uh, you can put it your macro here for example in this one so my macro is available in which folder okay d drive power mill p mill folder macro line width if you run this macro for the selected tool path you can able to change the you know uh, line width actually okay so that is what about from uh, uh, change from that uh, you know line width this is the emptiest one or you can not the selected one for all the tool path if you want to do for the selected one okay there are another thing you want to do it is um, if you go to the menu here under tool path you open the tool path okay so maybe you can open with the uh, open with uh, this one okay now here you can able to uh, now if what what is the first one is uh, export tool path into a project actually right so you, we can find the same export tool path into a project so i need to add one more here maybe different one so what you can do is copy the button folder from here to here because this is the open loop and this is a closing the loop copy this one okay and paste it here okay enter and you can able to uh, uh, specify the path okay now you, you if you save this one again okay if you right click this one you can see double time it is coming actually because the same drive same uh, macro i am calling here so this is how you can able to do that uh, selecting the macro this will function uh, this macro will work for the selected tool path one not for all actually previously uh, maybe uh, you, you had seen that suresh has applied the collision check for all the tool path so what if i want to uh, apply for the specific one you can right click go to the user menu and you can say collision check actually okay right so maybe our, maybe you can check a go check also actually right so you can go check so there are no gouges are found so where it is there actually you can see all those my commands are uh, we are configuring here actually so command d drive uh, go check okay go check tool path this is the macro and what is the label for that go check so where is this macro you can keep it this macro anywhere else you can copy only you have to change this uh, you know directory and you can put any name here for your reference so those will be comes here in under your user defined menu where it's a useful function uh, very useful for the users are uh, really uh, doing large projects or maybe really interested in applying macros and maybe they are working around uh, work around more number of they are very useful for this actually okay so you have either uh, run a macro uh, with a drop down menu okay or maybe you can use it for uh, uh, you can use it for this one actually so something like uh, right click over the tool path you can have the user menu okay so both the method you can apply so now we had seen some examples right so uh, examples means um, we had seen some uh, functions how it works let us open one by one we will see where uh, how it was applied so if you go to the number of tool paths okay so we had seen if else function right so integer sir so integer is actually have to start zero and number so zero here integer is starting number is zero okay. so or maybe we are giving to at zero one and uh, they are giving a command called for each okay. for each means for there is an uh, there is an uh, you know a command for each uh, that is more important and uh, okay for each actually so for each is looping 
uh, entities, looping entities, something like, you know, uh, maybe a tool path or maybe an, uh, or maybe a pattern, whatever it is actually, okay? So maybe we are seeing for tool path, okay? If you go down a little bit, okay? Okay, uh, for pattern, you can see for each pattern, this is a variable and in folder pattern. So you need to add something. Okay, so this is about pattern or toolpath, whatever it is. Okay, so I'm for searching for toolpath. Okay, so you can see that this is one of the example for each TP in folder toolpath under my folder. Maybe you can create a folder inside that. Uh, and the integer size add last time as TP names, TP dot name actually. So that means you are going to add the last name here actually. Maybe you can find some more examples here like that. Okay. So what I'm uh, coming to say is for if you want to apply renaming a tool part, for example, if you go to the tool rename or whatever it is. For in this case, for each T is a variable in folder tool. That means whatever the tool uh, created under the tools entity, right? Activate the tool dollar t t dot name doesn't mean that we are because the name is keep on changing we cannot specify a name actually so that's why I tool dollar t name actually that means any name activate it and a string t name actually string t name is dollar actually what you have to do is a string uppercase you uh, because customer is requesting for a capital letter whether you are inputting the smaller letter uh, the macro will change automatically uppercase okay and the tool type so the first tool type so whether it is a uh, bull nose ball nose type and the diameter uh, d is uh, uh, we are adding d for that okay then tool diameter is we know about the command tool diameter okay the tool dot diameter is our uh, you know retrieving the parameter from the tool path and r is again uh, you know some um, uh, alphabet uh, alphabet and we are calling the tip radius okay and uh, then you are going to rename the tool path print it actually so this is what we had seen uh, before how the you know that uh, print it or maybe an in message info message info means only it will throw the message print means it will it is going to change the name so if you run this one actually example um, if you run this macro here, okay, so tool name. So you can see that uh, it's already existed, right? So it will get stopped actually because there are two names are there. Still, you can fine tune it. No worries about that. You can see that it is 8 mm and uh, tip radius, it's type D or 10 or 10 actually. So again, it is coming the same thing here actually, okay? So likewise, you can able to, uh, you know, you can change your uh, or edit your uh, macro by this way. For example, for tool path, okay, tool path. So integer count is zero, okay, because we need to give some uh, one, two, three number. For each previously, this is, this this can be changed, dollar $TP, whatever the name you want to change, but you have to recall it, okay, you have to recall it in the next uh, year actually, dollar $TP. For each dollar TP in this time, instead of tool, we are putting tool path. So whatever the things under tool path, it is going to be uh, activate each, okay, each dollar TP name. And you have to input something because, you know, for tool path, customer may ask roughing or semi-finishing, but power mill don't know which, in, which is which one, maybe the customer, the power mill, they know about uh, the name of the tool path have to be prefixed, okay. So you want to input that, okay? We will put input command here and enter the value so that there is a pop-up uh, dialog box will come. And the count is equal to count plus one, actually, because the count is zero, okay? So count is zero, and now we are giving one value, okay? The first toolpath will be one. So the next toolpath will be two. If it is 10, 20, 30, you can put 10, 10 here, actually. And uh, the starting count will be 10 here, okay? This is 10. Okay, and here you have to 10, that means 10, 20, 30, it will go, okay? So here I'm putting zero here and count is one, right? Then string name, new name, actually new name is, we are going to print the name or uh, what is the thing is dollar count, dollar count is this one, right? 
So it's dot number one. And uh, I'm giving some, uh, you know, underscore uh, this extra um, character I'm using. Uh, and I'm saying print TP name. So the TP name is the toolpath name, which is see we are going to input here. Okay, right. Enter the toolpath. This will name will comes here and string uppercase tool dot type and some space D this one and R and tip radius. Then rename toolpath new name print the name. That's all actually. So you can change it your own actually. If you want underscore, maybe you want to change something or you delete want to delete something, you can do it. So similar way, if you run this one actually toolpath rename. So it will asking each and every time because you know in the macro what we had specified each for each toolpath the the name of the toolpath have to be entered by the user okay so for this one the first one is r o u g h right maybe in i put r o u g h rough okay you can see one is the count and the rough is what the user entered the uh, uh, that uh, variable tip radius and what is the diameter and tip radius of that one actually. So this is a five axis tool path. Maybe I could finish. So you can change similar like way you can able to run all this one actually until the macros is getting completed. That is why we say for each, this is the condition. It may be used for, for each. You can put your own variable name in folder should be in that format and uh, you can put pattern and this should be the same. The name should be toolpath means toolpath, uh, pattern, and maybe boundary, or maybe uh, maybe a uh, level or sets. Whatever it is, you can able to run this actually. So this is about for each. Uh, you can edit uh, that rename toolpath or whatever it is. Okay, right. So it is very useful function for you actually. And for some more example, I will. I want to say is. Uh, uh well statement seen that one i'm going to show a real example of that so the example uh, of this one is Rajesh, yeah. uh, sorry sorry to interrupt uh so uh so do you, uh, how much time more you because we are we, we are just running out of time so how much time more you need five to ten minutes training okay. so um all the for the, all the participants maybe uh I think you have to extend. I think maybe we might end up in next 15, 20 minutes. So hope uh, everyone have time. Uh, yeah, uh, continue, uh, Rajesh. Yeah, sure. So uh, I will be, uh, I'm going to complete within five, 10 minutes so that you have uh, time to ask you and a So this is one of the if else statement. So the statement is something uh, because this macro is built for a condition actually if the if the cutter is ball nose cutter okay so whatever the start height i'm input start height means safe height maybe you can say safe height if it is 100 mm so the condition is if it is ball nosed what you have to do is because it's we are going to uh, uh, export in the tool center point so center point means diameter divided by two right so the the number is what you are going to input is here actually the message uh, error is um, the input is actually like dollar uh, dollar num actually so here dollar num this is where you are going to input this is recalling here actually minus tool diameter divided by two that means if it is a 10 mm uh, so if it is your uh, safe height is 100 mm and your tool diameter is 10 mm means 95 is your start height okay so if it is n will or tip radius, it, it should be the same. There is no change in that. So that's what about difference between these two. So that's why we called if statement. The second condition is end mill and the third condition is tip radius. If there is, if you want extend, you can extend more actually. So this is a type of example. Now I, I believe you can little bit understand about how the variables work, how you are going to call it. Okay, little bit about not I'm saying the whole macro, but at least you can able to find based on the input I had given actually, right? So this is an, one of the example. Then uh, the final one uh, I would like to take is many customers is asking for, you know, a multiple views of setup sheet. Okay, right? Different views of the setup sheet. Okay. So for that one, actually, it's very simple one. 
uh, what you have to do is you all know this process how to create a setup sheet okay so first one is either you are using excel or a word document whatever it is you are going to uh, create a table actually and uh, whatever the customer is asking the information about we are going to have this i, I hope uh, this commands actually the commands means this is the command okay so i i hope everyone can uh, uh can understand where it comes from okay i let if it is not there if you i can show you it is all available under documentation parameters a setup sheet summary okay so what i had whatever the things i am uh, extracting the details all it is coming from here only right so deprecated for setup sheet so these all the variables and i am calling here actually right so this is what about i had this is the basic one okay basic one and uh, the command wherever i need i i can able to extract the details thing and one more thing i want to do here is i want to ca capture four views okay so instead of a uh, top view uh, top view side view i put some different name so that e i can easily identify the uh, you know while opening and editing the uh, in the notepad so take one take two take three take four it's a simple example okay so what i can do is here um, if you go to uh, go save as right so macro you have to run the macro parallelly ex okay and uh, it's uh, something like um, dot html format actually right so i got a web page okay so once you done actually you can have that ex dot uh, this one right so in this one if you go to uh, if you i will show in the actual one what i did you open this so you have to go and find it take actually take one take two we had given right only those areas we need to change it i am just coming down there actually okay uh, so so it is here somewhere okay okay so this is what about uh, the image okay so gen if you save that one we had recently saved right so let me open that one also sorry in our notepad i will show you where you want to change now it is easy to find because that's why i put take actually as an uh, this one so you can see that take take one is your uh, this is your uh, you know take one is your image that means maybe it is a top view whatever it is so what you have to change here is let's open this what you have to change here is inside the bracket the same bracket you can see that uh, sorry uh, in this one okay right here only this bracket uh, one uh, this this uh, bracket okay so what you have to change here is instead of that copy this it's all available in your uh, in your macro folder actually okay so copy this actually Okay, right copy this and paste it here actually you can able to take your own instead of paste it this one actually okay so that means what you are going to capture is snapshot dot image and the image image size is also controlled actually because if you are not giving this command that image will not coming into the into that box actually it may be bigger and you are not able to print properly so that's what i did it here and uh, i had printed for four images you can see they just copy different this one because take one take two take three take four right so i just copy this that that same uh, the same uh, excel file and maybe html format is available in your uh, folder also that uh, partner macro folder so now if you run that this actually you know about how it blog maybe uh, you may um, seen it and you have to write a macro for that because it won't directly print it because you need to run a loop for this so uh, first one uh, it will check whether the project is saved otherwise about the macro okay you have to save it otherwise it won't do it because it is going to save in a particular uh, directory uh, that uh, that means that project directory and uh, the directory is created if it is if it is bought aborted and it is creating automatically and the four uh, views are coming into the picture actually okay so rotate iso one macro pass macro top image and macro three and macro 
so that is how it will work so automatically it will capture the four image and it will paste into your this one if you want to change or editing something uh, kindly check uh, cop keep a copy uh, and uh, you can make it edit in this one actually right so that's what about i want to say from uh, this today uh, i have one more thing uh, i had seen some uh, uh, no mold based automation in a color format so uh, that is about uh, a bigger one but still i am going to show it very fast okay so the thing is many many have questions as raised uh, from this one actually sorry close this one sorry for that okay the last one i'm going to show very fast this is a very useful one if maybe uh, you can configure one or one actually so if you change to color mode oh sorry there's no color here So for that, I do not have any color. Just a minute, I will pop up. Just two minutes, I will finish with this one, so that you can able to understand how to implement the same. Actually, yes, of course, I have this. Okay, so I delete all the tools, uh, tool paths. I am going to delete everything, tools, uh, all features, everything. Okay. So now uh, uh, the thing is here. Um, the thing is here is you know how to work uh, with uh, you know templates, two path templates, right? So for example, if it is an M6 hole, it may be you have a four tool paths. One is center drill. The another one is uh, if it's M6 hole, you have to put 5.1 drill, and uh, you have to put chamfer and tap. Okay. So what you are going to do is okay, if it is an M6 hole or maybe an uh, M8 holes, you want to paste your uh, pa uh, your template here. Okay, it's a template. You can right click and uh, save as template. You can put it in your folder. Okay, yeah, and keep that folder name as M8 under holes. Actually, okay, like this, you can able to have the folder name. Okay, right now, uh, just I will delete um, delete all the colors, your levels actually. Okay, now uh, you you imported the model, right? So now you what the first step is going to do is you want to capture each and individual color under the levels and steps, right? So there is an uh, there are different uh, macros are all I will club all together actually. Uh, so for that I'm going to run this um, drilling automation. Color coding macro convert. Uh, convert uh, color sets to macro. This is available in your this one. Once you're done, what's happening here is the macro is uh, going to quickly capture all the different colors and put it in the level, right? Okay, different levels. So if you select this one, so only it will select that particular color only. Okay, you can see that particular color only will come. So now we select sorted out the color, okay, and the surface has been acquired within the levels, okay. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create a macro, okay. Just open this macro, uh, just a minute, uh, maybe and set macro for a particular one, okay. So the macro is something very, it's very simple. You can uh, you can able to record this macro, very simple. So what you have to do is just basic uh, basic functionalities like edit all those things. And what we are going to do is set particular color. Where whatever the color is there, you are going to select that color, okay? And uh, if it is an, a hole, you can say create hole. If it is a feature set, you can say feature set. And what feature set you want to like. And uh, if it is a multi-axis, you want to turn off, turn off those. These are all recording only. Then you are calling the templates from the folder, okay? And you are going to calculate that. Very simple one. The first step, if you run that macro, sorry, first step when you run the macro, the power will capture all the levels, okay, uh, and acquire the different colors. And step for in the second step, uh, you create a folder called M8 holes, okay. In the M8 holes, keep the templates ready, right? 
and uh, you want to create a set macro okay that uh, that color that uh, you know that uh, this level name 255 zero is the color name actually so here also you can say 255 and uh, inside that you can see it's an uh, it's a whole feature and uh, for m8 holes you can copy this okay and if you want to edit the template you can edit it okay and if you run this actually you can able to uh, no, uh, you can able to uh, create number of tool paths okay uh, within a, uh, within a very short term time and it is completely automated and uh, you can able to you know very uh, complete very fast i think you had so seen that video uh, if you have any this all those macros available within the team folder uh, it is accessible to you so if you have anything in your uh, mind or change something maybe uh, you can contact me at uh, if you can able to work it on author okay so with that uh, i'm ending my session um, i hope you can understand a little bit about macro and you can edit if you if you want uh, based on the customer uh, necessity actually right thanks uh Srini, from you yeah uh if uh can i uh, rajesh and uh, suresh can you come on camera please so yes. thanks everyone uh, of course i think uh, we are running short of time but of course i think if uh, since everyone are there i think uh, you are very much eager and uh, of course i think it was an interesting session maybe we can have some 10 minutes of q a uh, uh if anyone have anything to ask for or any, anything uh, please uh, let us please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask or if you can even put your chat uh, message also. Hello. Hope, uh, Sir, I have one question. Can I ask? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Sir, thank you for sharing your information. Uh, we got, understood all the how to customize ribbons and how to add their macros. But, sir, can you explain one or two brief how macros can be created? Or I have two means uh, customer demands. They are all the customers are demanding that macros. Means one micro is that uh, <coughs> when we import the job for in power mill. The properties of that job, that means X, Y, Z length area, should be uh, <coughs> exported on Excel. So, is it possible? Can you do that? Uh, so, is it anyone uh, team members want to take this one? They can do yeah, it by uh, uh, HTML uh, setup sheet. They will get all the detail model size uh, or block size in that model. In setup sheet, we can do it. In setup sheet, yeah, uh, sir. Can you please show one demo? How can we do that? That was one question. Another question was uh, for uh, this uh, when there are multiple multi electrodes machining, uh, the customer, uh, the main customer, our, that is our main customer, he is demanding from so many days that he has one plate and there are multiple electrodes, means we can say 10 to 20 electrodes. So if he wants like this, Mac, when we run that, all, should, uh, all the models should be imported in at one time. Because he's taking a lot of time, it is time consuming process to set that one one electrode on that plate. So we want one Mac for that. Can you get that or uh, can you guide us how to make that? Uh, Vikrant, actually, I want to be more specific. Uh, so what do you want? Actually, you want to uh, get the information about um, X size, Y size, Z size block or what do you want? Actually? The, there are two uh, different macros. First one was that about X, Y, Z, uh, I want in Excel sheet. And second one was of that okay. electrodes. There's two type of max but, I want. Okay, for, for electrode, if it is a single electrode or multiple electrodes in the multiple, same... Uh, multiple electrodes of okay. different, different types, you can say. Okay. So for each an electro, each electrode, you want to print the size? No, sir, no. Uh, uh, so, uh, Rajesh, I'll explain the uh, requirement actually. So, it uh, uh, came from uh, Mersan actually. So, uh, they required two uh, micros. One micro uh, either uh, from power shape or power mill. So, they are importing uh, one single single electrode. So, for example, okay. electrode E, electrode 1, 2, electrode uh, 10. So, what they are doing okay. basically, so they uh, required, uh, uh, in basic stage, they required uh, uh, quotation purpose okay so okay uh, that quotation purpose that xyz means that material uh, length width and uh, height uh, should be exporting uh, uh, in excel sheet so right now what they are doing they are just importing a uh, uh, oh, okay one by one electrode in power shape 
then they they are going to check information and those information they copy paste or they uh, put in manually understood 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 so uh, i will show you one example here okay so how to extract uh, uh, a value of xyz as a block size actually it may be a block size or it may be if you want block size i have different uh, there is a command there i can extract that one also uh, for setup sheet summary oh, but not required in setup sheet actually so it should have where you want to print excel excel sets you want in excel format no, no, no. No, no, we know about Maybe, the setup sheet. Uh, um, but anyways, even if we can print in uh, this uh, setup sheet also, so they can just copy and paste the entire yeah. uh, thing yeah. and they okay. can paste in Excel. So that's also. And they can yeah. uh, open uh, HTML with, with Excel. So it's not an issue. Yeah, it's they not can an open issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, I can actually. Huh? Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. So for a single macro, it is very simple actually. Uh, what I had, uh, sorry, just a minute, I will close this one. We did it for some customer actually. So for this for single block, it is very simple. You can call the command block limits x length, block limits x y and z, so that you can able to capture that one. Okay. So, okay. so for the multiple one, so we have to find a way. We actually we have to find for each okay for each command. And uh, if you want, I can write a macro for you. Not now, but uh, I will uh, let you know. No, sir. Uh, it's, my question uh, was not like that. Uh, this I understood of this uh, X, Y, Z. That are different micro. Okay. And another micro is means uh, we have to import all the models, different models on one plate. So I want macro for okay. that. that is Vikran, different. Vikran, Vikran, just uh, uh, like let's the one by one we uh, we can finish actually. So uh, the first the, micro, sir, I understood X, Y, Z. Uh, so I will tell him that is from HTML, you copy that in Excel. I will inform him that. But second one, can I uh, get that macro? Yeah, so first yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. You are okay with, correct? Yeah, first okay. macro, I, I can understand. Rajesh, right? uh, so uh, what we can do, now, we'll uh, discuss this uh, later also. So I'll uh, explain you the more that what exactly sure, sure. customers require. And second requirement mm. is like uh, they have one gang plate. Okay, so for example, 300 okay. by 200 or uh, some odd size uh, type of plate. And what basically they are doing, they are importing a macro, uh, sorry, uh, importing okay. a model. And th that mm -hmm. model, uh, uh, what they are doing right now, they are just uh, taking X, Y, Z, how much is the, and then the, they're rotating that uh, model accordingly to, because this model is not uh, aligned to that plate. Okay, so first they need to okay. align uh, that model. Uh, okay. uh, and then uh, they have to fix uh, that uh, location, like tapping location. So which tapping location mm -hmm. it has to mm -hmm. be go so that is second requirement so they have uh, multiple uh, electrodes and they decide that which electrode should have uh, which uh, tap location hmm. yeah so, i think uh, since this is going to be a lengthy one i yeah, think it is a yeah. simple thing to show immediately i think we need to work as a team and sit to understand and then find find the way out uh, but I think hope oh, there are options. I think we can see which option works best. I think Vikrant, uh, we can come back to you. I think okay, better. Sir. I think you just align with Bala, and then we can discuss on this side. Yes. Sir. Uh, uh, after this session, maybe later on. So thanks for asking. Is there anything else, to Vikrant? Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks. Uh, anyone else have any any particular query on this today's session? Like, is there anything that you want to any comments also are welcome. Like, if you feel that something additional you want to hear, I think that's also more well. Yeah, too. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, too. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I have same requirement, hai, but uh, power ship ke liye hai. power ship me jo hai na, actually usko material size, quantity, or uh, product ka jo component extract hoga, mold base, uska XY size. You can get it from GS8 from elect when you create electrode. No, no, electrode. No, if I have a mold base or part import, then I have to use the part name, material size, or quantity, or finish size, or material weight. 
ये पॉसिबल है बट पावर शेप में चाहिए पावर मिल में नहीं बट आपके पास ये है ये ऑप्शन मतलब माइक्रोवेव है या कोई नहीं 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 वो डायरेक्ट ऑप्शन है सपोज यू क्रिएटेड द मोल्ड बेस इनसाइड द पावर शेप दे हैविंग ऑप्शन टू एक्सट्रैक्ट द पार्ट डिटेल्स एज वेल एज द बिल ऑफ मटेरियल साइज ओके 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 दैट विल डायरेक्टली एक्सपोर्ट टू एक्सेल ओके आई विल कांटेक्ट यू सर या श्योर ओके थैंक यू anyone uh, i think uh, any any last questions i think any time i think uh, everyone uh, here i think you should be having the contacts of us uh, with whom you are working closely so any 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 point of time if you have anything after the session also you can just uh, message or call uh, to get uh, we can we can talk more on this but any maybe we have one more minute to go maybe let's say is, is there any final questions or else we will come to the final uh, session closure sir uh, are you going to share that micro that's uh, made by suresh sir yes. so suresh can you just uh, highlight what what we are going to post to this session what we are going to do? Uh, yeah uh, after this uh, i am just uh, uh, sharing my screen Uh, yeah but yes, each macro required a two new subscription order from you guys if you you commit it, you you are committing that then we will uh, share all the macro yeah, yeah. yes we yeah. try sir we will try to sell that otherwise this session will not have any impact so we also need uh, something in uh, return like guru dakshina right <laughs> yes, Suresh and uh, the team uh, Rajesh has put lots of time to arrange all the data together. So, sir, after creating this macro, we have to uh, this uh, customize it. But firstly, we have to learn that, and then we can explain that properly. See, so, this macro is a key key functions to get your renewal. When you uh, customize everything uh, functionality at customers, then customer will not uh, easily think about to move from your. Uh, solutions to other yes, because sir. they have so many customizations which other uh, competitor cannot do so ye uh, customizations aap unko aise other dal do ki they uh, wo handicap ho jaye so no, this no, will really answer. help you to uh, get um, uh, renewal business on time uh, from them hum se main sir wahi demand karte hai unko ki dekha rehte hai unhone to demand karte hum unki demand puri nahi kar pate lekin abhi aapne share kiya na to ho jayega wo okay uh, i am just uh, this is all the micros i am going to share uh, along with the ppt and as well as the recording link and uh, as well as the customize of uh, this uh, events you can able to change the path uh, because of, without changing the path it will not work uh, you have to change uh, where you are pasting your micros uh, on the customer uh, computer uh, you have to modify according to that one then only uh, this you can able to uh, implement on the your computer or maybe you can create the individual uh, icons what i shown on the before like you can go and you can create the individual icons and you can give the whatever the name you are like and what are the icon you are going to like uh, for us individual will be very yeah. difficult because i think we have a list now i think this yeah. total macro how many macros we have put together now uh this is uh, more than around uh, not counted uh, each folder is having more than 5 uh, to 6 around more than 30 35 micros are available uh, on that particular suppose i will count so I think, uh, it, it will yeah. not be feasible to do in each and every everything in digital like check into the property yeah yeah here around uh, 34 micros and in the general applications uh, is around 9 9 uh, uh, total uh, sorry it is in a 16 Okay, thirty-five plus six, around forty, forty-five microns are there. Okay. Yeah. 
So I think that path you have to define. I think first of all, I think I request everyone, uh, once you get this data, I think we are going to share this data on a mailer with all the, is it possible, uh, Suresh, or we'll share it on one drive? Data, what is the data size? Is whether uh, it will go in me? No, we will uh, share on the one drive. Uh, one drive. Okay, yeah. so it will be shared on one drive with access to everyone. So please download it and then uh, first in, install in your system, have this one uh, practiced, ensure that everything is working. And in case if you have any queries or you are not you are not able to do it, please reach out back. We can support you on that. Ensure that you are, you are having everything in your system. You, are, you just practice yourself, see how it is working. And of course, the next uh, important step is that once you are ready, I think we wanted each one of you to go to your customers and do the same thing, install there, ensure that they are starting using these macros as a first step. I think there are definitely they'll they will come back with a lot of other uh, requirements and other things. I think we can address it uh, individually at that point of time. But I think let's start with this one. I think it's a it's a good area to start, maybe like around 45 macros if they have. And if they start practicing it and if they start utilizing it, I think then it will become a different story for us. I think as Dushant was pointing out, so renewals will be stronger for us, of course, and it is a value add for the customer. I think you can show some value that you are bringing in rather than just putting the base uh, software installation. So we are adding some value to the customer. And they also find that the more value in, and, in, and of course these are small, small things, steps, but of course it will, may make a huge impact like in reducing and the user may feel better that yeah a lot of steps are getting reduced i think more often what suresh was pointing out is how to reduce the multiple steps into one step so that thereby the user time is saved and of course uh, we, we can make it faster the process or the uh, toolpath generation process so that's our first uh, thing you start and, and, calling yeah, also, it I was and then go to customer and ensure that every, you are installing it at the, at the customer end. That is the action of post action of this uh, call. And of course, one more point before I leave uh, for the other team members to comment is that uh, if you have any feedback, like if you want more of any of the sessions to add on to this or anything further, if you want a follow up session on this, please don't hesitate. Please uh, put put I mean, put the message back to us. Uh, of course, and then we will we will definitely come back. Maybe if you want to do one more post session, we want to do one more session. So those things we can plan it if depending upon your feedback. Uh, uh, yeah, Suresh, Rajesh. Yeah, yeah. I anything. want to yeah add one more um, before going to the partner. Uh, I want to see each one of this uh, customized tool for on your uh, uh, computer. Uh, just uh, give me the acknowledgement uh, you are going to install and uh, you are going to use uh, using these micros uh, via email or something you can give me the acknowledgement that is the better startup uh, for to the micro use uh, maybe uh, we will give some uh, 10 days time maybe within 10 days uh, each technical guy need to install on this all the micros on that particular their computer and uh, maybe it is possible to say the screenshot uh, we are uh, installed and uh, started using or something confirmation from your end yes sir we will customize it and share share the screenshot yeah good then uh, so thanks everyone for joining and uh, i think uh, thanks uh, first of all uh, to to extend to stay back in the extended session i think instead of one and a half hour we have gone beyond two hours but of course i think it was hopeful uh, hope i think it was interesting uh and the session session was overall interesting so thanks for being here and uh, hope uh, our post action uh being taken care so after we share these decks with you with each one of you please ensure that whatever we have stated here as post action of this session please take care that you are uh, implementing it kind of thing. And uh, of course, we'll also be having a kind of round of uh, post uh, sometime. Uh, we'll be having a kind of uh, discussions with you, like what's what's the update on this macros and what you are doing with that. So with that, uh, thanks everyone for being here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.
Srini, you should stop recording, then you can leave the meeting. <laughs>